linearization and local stability. If I consider the system, this nonlinear system, and uh, it linearize about the equilibrium point. The equilibrium point for this is 0, 0, as may be checked from the right hand side parts of these two equations. The linear approximation about 0, 0 turns out to be these two equations upon applying the Taylor series approximation, which takes this matrix equation form. So x dot equal to this matrix into x is the linearized system of this nonlinear system about the equilibrium point, the point of interest. Uh, a similar procedure for linearization can be applied for controlled system as well. So this system is uh, having a scalar control u. It's a control system. The point of interest can be taken as a zero origin. So when it is uh, linearly approximated about x equal to zero, we have x double dot equal to minus u. So the Taylor series is applied to uh, the states x and x dot, and you have x double dot equal to minus u is the linearized system. If the control law is taken to be this, then the linearized closed loop dynamics will be this equation because the linearization should be applied to the control u as well. We have Lyapunov's linearization theorem which states, if the linearized system is strictly stable, that is if all eigenvalues of A are strictly in the left half plane, then the equilibrium point is asymptotically stable for the actual nonlinear system. If the linearized system is unstable, that is, if at least one eigenvalue of A is strictly in the left half, in the right half plane, then the equilibrium point is unstable for the nonlinear system. If the linearized system is marginally stable, that is, all eigenvalues of A are in the left half complex plane, but at least one of them is on the j omega axis, then one cannot conclude anything from the linear approximation. The equilibrium point may be stable, asymptotically stable, or unstable for the nonlinear system. So if, as an example, we can consider this uh, first order system. So the origin is one of the two equilibrium points. Okay, uh, Upon equating the right hand side to zero, we find that x equal to zero is one solution to that equation. And there's a second solution as well. So the linearization of this nonlinear system about the origin is x dot equal to ax. Now, upon applying the Lyapunov's linearization theorem, which we just discussed, this one, to this equation we have, we come up with the following conclusion. The following stability properties are implied for the nonlinear system. That is, when A is negative, A is negative, the system is asymptotically stable. A must be strictly negative. Asymptotic stability is assured. If A is positive, then the system is unstable. So A positive for the linear system. It's unstable. So Lyapunov linearization theorem says that it's unstable for the nonlinear system as well. When a equals zero, we cannot tell anything from the linearization. So the nonlinear system for third case becomes x dot equal to b x to the five. The linearization theorem cannot give any conclusion for this case. However, the next method of Lyapunov called direct method can describe the stability of the system easily. The pendulum motion problem also can be considered here. The pendulum has uh, two types of uh, equilibri equilibrium points, vertical downward equilibrium, and the pendulum is vertically upward. That's another equilibrium too. So upward equilibriums are unstable equilibrium points. The downward equilibriums are stable equilibrium points. So when theta is pi, it's in the vertical configuration. So we show that it's an unstable equilibrium point here. So it can be easily shown that the equilibrium points theta equal to pi and theta dot equal to zero of the pendulum are unstable. Consider this equilibrium point theta equal to pi and theta dot equal to zero. In a neighborhood of theta equal to pi, we can do this approximation. Okay, sine theta approximates as uh, pi minus theta plus higher order terms. So with this uh, notation that theta tilde is theta minus pi, the, we are linearizing about the equilibrium point theta equal to pi and theta dot equal to zero. That is, we have this governing equation. So, so the linear approximation is unstable. Therefore, the nonlinear system at this point is unstable as well. So the actual system had a sine theta here. Okay. 
So at theta equal to pi, we have linearized it, and this is unstable. So the actual nonlinear system with sine theta here is unstable at this equilibrium point at theta equal to pi. Now, Lyapunov's direct method. The basic idea of Lyapunov's direct method is a mathematical extension of the fundamental physical observation. If the total energy of a mechanical or electrical system is continuously dissipated, then the system, whether linear or nonlinear, must eventually settle down to an equilibrium point. Thus, we may conclude the stability of the system by examining the variation of a single scalar function. So the idea of Lyapunov's direct method comes from the idea of energy of uh, physical systems, mechanical, electrical, chemical, or whichever systems they are. However, the method looks for a scalar function, which has initially it has taken, it is built as energy function, but it is made abstract uh, in the general situation. That is, if a scalar function is found, which has certain properties, then Lyapunov's direct, direct method assures stability. So the inspiration for the scalar function is taken from the idea of energy, but in general, it's a scalar function which may not have any physical significance, may or may not have a physical direct physical significance with the system under study. Let's look at an example, the nonlinear spring mass damper system. It's got a, there's a spring, there's a mass, and there's a damper, it's a nonlinear spring, it's a cubic spring. So it's a nonlinear system. By applying Newton's laws of motion, it may be shown that the governing equation for this system is the second order nonlinear ordinary differential equation given here. It's got uh, x cubed, so this equation is nonlinear. The energy for the system is potential energy plus kinetic energy. Potential energy is carried by the spring. Kinetic energy is carried by the mass. So V equals half mv squared is the kinetic energy and this part is the potential energy. So that this is the total energy of the system. If I look at V dot, the variation of V dot, it works out to be this quantity by using the equation itself, by using the governing equation together with uh, V dot we can show that V dot X equals the strictly negative quantity. So this is a dissipative system. So because the, there's a dash pot, there's, there's a dissipating element here. The energy initially provided to the system will slowly dissipate away as heat. And eventually the system will come down to an equilibrium point. So by looking at energy, we're able to tell, we're able to conclude about the equilibrium of the system. So by comparing the definitions of stability and mechanical energy, one can easily see some relations between mechanical energy and the stability concepts described earlier. So zero energy corresponds to the equilibrium point. Asymptotic stability implies convergence of mechanical energy to zero. Instability is related to growth of mechanical energy. So a scalar function, Vx is said to be locally positive definite if V0 is zero, and in a ball of radius R0 with x0 equal to 0 implies Vfx is strictly positive. At non-zero arguments, V must be strictly positive. V0 is assumed to be 0. If V0 is 0 and the ever property holds over the whole state space, then Vx is said to be globally positive definite. So if V is satisfying the positive definiteness in a ball of radius R, then V is locally positive definite. And if this property holds over a whole state space, then Vx is said to be globally positive definite. We may look at an example. So this is the function, the scalar function, which is mechanical energy for the pendulum. This is locally positive definite and not globally positive definite. In a, if in a ball of radius r, the function Vx is positive definite and has a continuous partial derivatives, and if it's time derivative along any tra state trajectory of the system, uh, 3.2 is a negative semi-definite, then Vx is said to be a Lyapunov function for the system. So we are given the function. Now, after defining Vx, local positive definiteness and globally positive definiteness of this function Vs, Vx, we look at the Lyapunov function. So if in a ball of radius R0, the function Vx is positive definite 
and has continuous partial derivatives and if its time derivative along any straight trajectory of the system is negative semi-definite, that is v dot is negative semi-definite means there is less than or equal to sign, then we accept it to be a Lyapunov function for the system 